All right, everybody. I am trying to show you uh, how to start a Hyper VR uh, base and rover configuration. This same uh, method actually applies to most of the uh, Top Gun Hyper and GR3, GR5 uh, receivers. Uh, it's always the same as far as starting your base and the rover, um, regardless of your model. So even though I have a Hyper VR today. Uh, you can use this uh, method uh, starting any other uh, base and rover configuration with UHF radios. So what I'll do is I'll start a new job, call it Hyper VR Base and Rover. Hit next, I will select my configuration. Once again, configurations are pre-done by your dealer or yourself. Or tested and then there's a separate video on how you actually configure these but for today I'm just using that we'll hit next um, depending on if you're starting your base on a known point that you might have surveyed on or if it's on an unknown point and you're doing localization you would change this if you're localizing you kind of don't want to have a projection set and this would be okay and I would hit next but today I'm actually setting my base up on a known point and it happens to be in a mainland coordinate system so projection so we'll go here again uh, my datum in this case is net 83 no trans and I am using geoid 8 in my state over here so these are the prerequisites for me to successfully actually start my base on the coordinate that I have collected so we'll hit next it is in U.S. survey feet, not meters, so we'll hit that. Northern easting elevation is the coordinate order. Hit OK. Green check. This way I have the job started. Um, what I may want to do is at this point, I may want to actually bring in my point that I surveyed in. So I'll go into exchange from file. I'm bringing in a point. It happens to be on the same computer. Uh, data collector that I have here with me, which means selected file units we don't need because it is in feet. We'll find this Hyper VR base is where it is. It is in the same format as what we're importing, meaning it's comma separated northing uh, point number, northing easting elevation and description codes. When I hit the green check over here, it should say imported one point. So if I look into my edit screen and under my points, I'll have a northing and easting and an elevation. If it all works out right, it should show um, with a satellite image. So if I turn on my background over here, it should fall right in front of my building that I'm recording this video in. And that is correct. So we'll hit home. That's just a common sense check. You don't have to do what I just did over here. But uh, let me go ahead and actually connect to the GPS. First thing that you always want to do is connect to the base because you have to start that on a point that you either have written down on your field uh, in your field notes or um, just like I did import it from a, a file so I'm connecting to the base hit connect the Bluetooth on it should be on which means the computer should find an available device to connect to let's wait for the search to be finished and that's my base for today that's the serial number off it will hit connect when we connect to the GPS, you should see this little icon change to a GPS receiver. Um, all right, now I'm connected. I am uh, next. The uh, next step would be go into setup, and you're you can kind of ignore. Yes, you can go into status, and you can actually see how many satellites you're seeing. But at this point, this is irrelevant because I'm about to start my base. So I'll go into start base, and over here, this is where if I want to, I could have keyed in those coordinates but I chose not to I actually chose to uh, bring them in from a uh, previous uh, file so I'll go into my base point number with a correct elevation a correct description and this is important over here so what this little button is asking for and you can see the little red outline is what is the height over the point now by default um, most of the configurations load in slant height, slant measurement height. And how you can tell the difference between them, you'll see the little icon change from a pole to a kind of a tripod. And uh, you really need to make sure that you're measuring the right height. I happen to have it sitting uh, on a 1.5 meter. And you can type in 1.5 and then switch it to 
the alphanumeric keyboard and actually type in M and you'll see when we uh, click anywhere over it actually converts it so it is 1.5 meters it's a windy day outside today so I didn't really set it up on my usually two meter uh, height pole but uh, this is the height of my base and before I hit start base typically um, I check my radio settings and uh, this is how you do it in this screen you hit the drop down and go into configure radio and if your settings are set right in all of your configurations you should see these populate so it's now starting querying the actual receiver for frequencies and if this successfully finds everything you should see a couple of frequencies I'll choose one I don't care I'll go this one today 4647 I will make a note of this screen because this is the same screen that we will have to configure our rover to so we'll say hit start radio and wait for these settings to actually be set over to the room base we'll hit close we can now close out of here and at this point I see that I'm at 17 satellites mm, autonomous position because it's a base it'll never be fixed so we'll just hit start and this should tell me that the base was started successfully and automatically asks for a rover connection we'll say yes let's go to the rover connection it switches and the software switches the base radio button to the rover radio button we'll hit connect again and it should once again do a bluetooth search now with this bluetooth search we will be picking the other receiver to actually connect uh, the base to or I guess to connect the rover to so we'll go here this is my 595 hit select connect once again we should see a successful connection with our actual receiver and because we switched the channel on the base side the program automatically kind of recommends saying hey if you changed and messed with the radio settings on the rover side on the base side it's likely that you will have to change some settings on the rover side so it does uh, bring up these things and I will on purpose uh, not actually if you know and we know that we actually switched it to that but if you uh, have it set wrong and you hit start radio what will happen is you're now on mismatching channels with your base and rover of course which means if you get out of these this screen you'll get a successful connection but you will not get any corrections from a base and when you go and actually check it into your survey and topo screen for example you'll see that there's no radio connection and there's obviously going to be something wrong with that so uh, how you fix it if you missed it in that first screen you click the drop down here hit setup going to configure radio and this is where we'll actually fix it we'll say oh that's where the base is actually transmitting on so we'll hit start base or st uh, start radio in this case to get in line with the base frequency also and hopefully after we do this hit close and we close this screen eventually if you give it a couple of seconds it updates and it says hey there's an update rate it also might notice or might tell you that there's a some based uh, station data that was received already that's a good sign and you'll get a fixed solution and now a fixed solution once again if I look at my map should be it is sitting really close to the base because I'm inside and I'm not really moving the pole but uh, occasionally this message I've seen it come up a couple of times but again it just means that everything's working right uh, my height happens to be also 1.5 feet uh, meters actually so let's do this on this too so now my uh, elevations on my poles are correct and my radio is actually correct if you want to verify that it's really talking to the radio it's a nice thing to do is go into status and check your distance and this is where the base distance instead of being miles or I don't know thousands of feet it really is because I'm only about five feet away from it so it's 4.82 feet away so I know I'm definitely talking to the right base all right um, just as with any other configuration what's useful if you're finished because now you're ready to actually do your s surveys and your stakeouts if you're finished please do yourself a favor disconnect gracefully so we'll hit connect hit disconnect this is a single uh, step process and you're done you can hit home and actually cl close the job uh, hopefully this video is uh, useful for those who uh, have trouble maybe with the radio starting 
And uh, if you have any questions and comments, leave them below. Thanks.